declaring ex-governor wanted, laying siege against him in his house. It, it, it is a national embarrassment. Greetings to you all, my people, and welcome to another episode of Damole News. All right, my people, you see, some people will just come to national TV and start saying gibberish words, all right, instead of focusing on IEFCC book, the court order, why don't we just focus on the main issue on ground, how Yaya Bello is being accused of stealing 80.2 billion naira, and the fact that the former governor of Kogi state is on the run means he has kokoshis in his cupboard. And before the EFCC brought this accusation of the former governor stealing 80.2 billion naira, of course, they have done their investigations and I believe they have evidence too. And this lawyer, also speaking on Arise TV, credit to them, said that the EFCC has lost a lot of case in court because they don't follow the legal process. But we all know how the court system and the judicial system can be manipulated in Nigeria. Anyways, I'm going to be playing you guys the video and walk you guys through it. But before then, please help us to like and share this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you. Well, um... If we talk about issues, there are many sides to this, uh, many twists to the issue on ground. But then, uh, for a fact, I may speak more on the legal side of this issue because uh, I cannot speak of what uh, I do not know or I do not have. Um, as we speak, we all know it's this trite law that courts of coordinate jurisdiction is not superior to one another. So if there is any judgment of a particular court, the only way to vacate such other or such judgment is to go to a superior court. Now, over years, over time, EFCC has been, I mean, been known for uh, um, this kind of sh shenanigans of, um, I mean, going around to just pick people, no investigation. That is the reason most times when they get to court, you see that they lose most of the cases in court. And how do I mean? If there's an order of court and there is a restraining order on an arrest, then you believe in the so-called court, then you went further to court of appeal. Now, to appeal such order, then the Court of Appeal has given a date for hearing, which is 22nd, which is Monday. Then you went further to another federal high court to seek another order to arrest and to prosecute ex-governor. I, I really need to understand because there are two major, uh, two major uh, um, um, group of people in this country that has really not helped our rule of law. And one is the politician, and the other one is the anti-graft agencies. Because if you believe in the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the judicial system, and you go to court for some redress, then the court give judgment or give an order, then you still go ahead. This is not, I mean, the, the, this is not a, 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 a barbaric uh, island. And it's not uh, a zoo so where anybody can decide and uh, decide whatever they want to do. If you, have be you believe in the cause, why don't you go through the normal process? We are not advocates of corruption. I detest it. In fact, anyone that is found cul culpable should answer for his case. But then, to do it, you must follow the rule of law. You must do it right. You don't use the wrong thing to... Correct the wrong thing. Declaring ex-governor wanted, laying siege against him in his house, it, it, it is a national embarrassment. The way EFCC is going about this is a total, uh, a, a total disappointment to some of us. Because this particular, this, the chairman of ES, EFCC is a lawyer, and I expect that he knows better. Do I may not be too surprised because I've heard some of our senior, uh, I mean, uh, uh, lawyers and uh, I've heard their opinions on this. And I have asked myself that 
where is the position of the law when somebody ma made a statement that says that court cannot stop somebody from being arrested? And I ask, the same court you can go and get a warrant of arrest, but the court cannot tell you not to arrest. And I ask myself, where is it written under our law that court cannot, the court does not have power to, 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 to save, to give an order or judgment that someone cannot be you know, arrested? So these are things we really need to look at holistically, critically, to ask ourselves, are we doing the right thing? If we have claimed that someone is, is, someone is wrong or someone has uh, uh, allegedly committed an offense, then we should do the right thing. Because another angle to it, the question I want to ask EFCC, you, you went to court, the Federal High Court, on an allegation that somebody stole 80 billion that belonged to the state. And that came 2015, even before the man became a governor. You amended it in another federal high court to say it is since 2016 that he stole the same 80 billion naira. Now, you, when the, this came up, that was three weeks, three weeks into his office when he was sworn in. The question again, how much is the total budget of Kogi State in, 2020, in 2016. Is there something fishing somewhere? So now, you now expect this man to surrender himself to you. Left to me, I will advise, uh, I will advise uh, uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Yayabelo to, so, to give in and surrender. If he has not done anything, let us see whether we will get justice or not. But now the fear is this. If EFCC is going this route, there is no one that will be at peace to say, I will get justice at which this is going. Will I be prosecuted or persecuted? That will be the questions from many, you know, from many people. And that is why you can see that Mr. Yayabelo is probably hiding and running from persecution. And that is what some of us also see. If there is court order, follow court order to the letter. You have gone to court of appeal. Why will you go to court uh, of the, the, the coordinates jurisdiction to seek the same thing you are looking for? To arrest somebody. For me, this is abuse of court processes. This is abuse of the judiciary. I mean, saying, uh, using your influence, using your power to decide then the next thing. The, the, well, I don't think this matter is a treasonable offense. So I do not see a reason why the military will be involved, the, uh, the IG is involved, the executive is involved, the all legislator right. is involved, everybody they are on uh, um, Yaya Bello. All right, all right. All right. Declaring all right. him if, wanted. If I can. See, can you just imagine what is coming from the mouth of this man? Can you just imagine what is coming from the mouth of a lawyer? Can you imagine? Yaya Bello has been accused of 80.2 billion naira. Instead of defending himself, he is running from the EFCC. The EFCC has declared him wanted. The DSS has declared him wanted. The customs have declared him wanted. The immigration service police has declared him wanted. Ibu Tinibu Sef has told him to stop running and submit himself to the right authorities. You see, before now, I normally blame EFCC because all the people that they have accused of doing this, of doing that, none of them have been persecuted. All the politicians, all the senators, governors, name them, none of them have been persecuted for their wrongdoings. You see, I later found out that the EFCC is not to blame, but the court system in Nigeria is to blame because the EFCC will present a case before the court and the court is the one to rule on this um, cases you get so the judicial system in nigeria is what is corrupt that is why any politician that is being accused of stealing money or doing something illegal can just walk free because they can just buy their freedom come in if i can come in now uh if i can come in now so that you can further unpack this uh, as you said from the legal standpoint uh you have made uh, very useful submissions about the fact that um you know uh, EFCC seems to be behaving uh, in an unbecoming way in trying to arrest uh, uh, a former governor based on, you know, mere allegations uh, for an offense that may not be treasonable in nature. But you have also alluded to 
uh, um, uh, a different showpiece in all this. Uh, the intentment of the federal government in all this case, because it, it doesn't look to an average eye, an average Nigerian, that this is just about the EFCC, given what the Inspector General of Police has said in withdrawing uh, the orderlies and the security of the former governor, in what the immigration service has said to say that I arrest him, you know, uh, if he attempts to uh, leave the country. And even the, uh, the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice is also saying, you know, he's also waiting in, uh, which gives uh, a kind of um, indication that this may not just be about the EFCC, but about, you know, the federal government, you know, looking for Yaya Belu. What are your specific thoughts on this type of a thing? Is this something that will be considered a new law? Or is this how um, uh, we will move forward dealing with uh, suspects, especially those who are politically exposed? And in law, you have said that, yeah, um, maybe Yaya Belu should hand himself over. But given how you know, the entire drama around it has gone, do you think that... Um, the law will be fair to him, at least from the point of view of the EFCC. Yeah, that is the reason why I said that um, Yaya Belo may not give in, I may not surrender, because of the entire drama. How he started, if you remember, I started by saying that the file in matter from 2015. And to 2016, three weeks in, uh, I mean, uh, when he became the governor. So it means that there's something that is not clear to us. There's something that we do not know. Like you, uh, you also said, maybe there's some powerful uh, cabal somewhere in the uh, government that are all bent, whether the Ayabelo had offended them by way or not, or he has miscalculated in his political, uh, I mean, uh, journey. And they, they decide to say, okay, we're going to show you. Now, what I need to say to this is clear. We remember when EFCC was, uh, I mean, uh, when EFCC came up, in not, uh, I think that should be 1999, there about 2000, and uh, during uh, former president Obasanjo, and a lot of people believe that it was used as a two, uh, as a, uh, uh, a bulldog to hunt some people that are enemies of the government or of the president at that time. And for a long time, that happened. And this moment, we, in fact, I had so much hope, so much belief when this new EFCC chairman came on board because he's a lawyer and I expected more from him. And I expected that what has happened in the past will not happen. But what we are still seeing, more like we're still seeing the same thing. EFCC is not independent anymore. EFCC feels that, okay, I can't do this job. If you feel that you are on, 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 on your job and you know what you are doing and there's an allegation against somebody and you want to go for this person, then do you need immigration? Do you need the, the IG? Do you need uh, the military? Do you need the uh, attorney general of the federation? Do you need all these people? To gather together, it means that something is not clear to some of us. And that is what we are asking the government. We are, I'm not really a fan of anybody, and I'm not holding brief for anybody. But if we have to do anything, let's do it well, because we don't know who is the next person tomorrow. The former chairman of EFCCC, when, when uh, a judgment came and they didn't obey the judgment of the court, and people started shouting that, no, obey the judgment of court, we reminded them that when... You were the chairman. You did the same thing. And we told you then to be cautious because it will come to somebody's turn. And it, get, it, it got to your turn. So now, even Mr. Chairman of EFCC should be careful. And it should not be pushed around by some politicians. And it should not be pushed around by some sentiment. I think it should do its job. What is sworn an oath to? To uphold. I think it should face it. And we should leave all this said, if there are issues with government, there are some people uh, that, that, that have issues with Yayabelo and they want to go through this route. I think the chairman of EFCC should look at his integrity, should look at his antecedent, and should look at what it stands for and do the right thing as against answering the call of the people that pays.
it is so unwise for a lawyer to come on national TV and start saying these gibberish words. Anyways, that is it for you all, my people. I saw this news and I decided to share it with you guys. So please let me know your opinion in the comment section. And please help us by liking and sharing this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend it to more people. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. Amen.